Good evening. Welcome to a new video. This one is going to be a bit longer than usual because I am going to implement a new feature in a, in a package that I released last week. So I will show you a little bit the package, how it works, what it does. Uh, I will also discuss another package that is related uh, in some ways. And actually, that package inspired me to do this one. So it is definitely related. And uh, it's also the opportunity to, to take a little break uh, from all that is happening right now. So I hope that you will enjoy this, uh, this video. We're going to learn about package development. You're going to learn probably about, because I think I'm going to need non-standard evaluation. Uh, you're going to learn about monads. Monads, now that's, that's something I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about in other videos and in other blog posts, but this one will be the first video where I will talk about monads. And uh, you'll see very powerful concept. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to explain. It's not really easy to explain, but once you get it, uh, then you will see that it's a very powerful, very powerful and, and simple in a way concept. So, uh, and before that, before we start, uh, I, I want to thank you all who subscribed and also the ones that did not subscribe, because if you're watching, thank you. Um, because we're now at 1,035, I think, people. And I'm really surprised because when I started doing these videos, I just wanted to talk about things that interested me which don't necessarily interest others and i as you see i do all kinds of videos i tend to avoid tutorials of a very simple nature sometimes i do that but i tend to avoid that because first of all i think that uh, it's much better to read okay if you want to learn about the package much better to read if you want to know how to filter a data frame just read the uh, documentation and filter and I, I also don't want to waste time with uh, with trying to know what is trendy, what people are looking for, try, or doing uh, search engine optimization, all those kind of things. So I just I just do whatever I, I'm interested in at the moment, kind of like my blog posts actually. And uh, you know, some videos work better than others. Uh, generally, I must admit the tutorial videos work uh, have a lot more views than the non-tutorial ones, um, but still. I, I'm really enjoying doing this, so thank you all for subscribing. And um, and I will also make a special video. I've been working on it, but rather thinking about it, uh, exactly what I want to talk about. Um, a special video for the, to celebrate the fact that, uh, that this channel now has 1,000 subscribers. But um, yeah, I, I still have to think a little bit about it because it will be a video that is unrelated to, to programming, uh, and it will be more of a, you know, a video about statistics in general. So now let's go to what I want to talk about today. So I released a package called Loud, and it's not impossible that the name of the package will change because it's very early alpha use at your own risk type of deal. And actually, I can show you in my web browser. So this is the um, the website of the package built automatically using package down very nice package um, if you build a package and you you can generate a website basically for free right? there's literally zero effort in, involved using package down and uh, so what this package um, allows you to do is it gives you this loudly function that allows you to decorate in a sense other functions and then these functions, uh, instead of just providing the output that they usually provide, now they do a new type of output, a list, where the first element called result, well, is you know simply the result of uh, the argument evaluated by square root. And then you also get a log element in the list which tells you what happened and at what time. Now, I also want to change that in the future. I want to make it more flexible so that people can uh, kind of provide their own messages. But for now, it does this. 
Um, it works with the native pipe. And I will explain what this bind loudly deal is. You, it's not too complicated, don't worry. And then, you know, you get this nice log over here that explains step by step what happened, at what time it started, at what time it ended. So, um, and it works for now at least with any function. I haven't found, I mean, I, I wrote some unit tests, I tested it, but there might be situations where it doesn't work. But as you see here, it works also with dplyr functions. You can you know, select the function, uh, select the columns, you can group by, you can filter, you can summarize, and you get your result and you get all of this. Uh, there is also a uh, new pipe in this package that uh, allows you to not have to use this bind loudly. And again, I will explain what that is during this video, but for now, just um, just think of this new pipe as a way to be able to chain these loud functions, okay? And it works kind of the same way. Now, as I said, early development held with string and gs, so use at your own peril. And this package has been inspired by discussions with certain people uh, that are listed here, and I will also list them in the description. Uh, a blog post that Kupak wrote, and the maybe package. The maybe package, also very interesting, uh, developed by Andrew McNeil. This package uh, provides something that is maybe familiar already to you if you know the safely function from the per package. Um, I will then go through the safely function and, the, and maybe, etc. But safely allows you to also decorate a function, and then this new function will either provide a result or provide uh, something else. Oh, no, sorry, that's possibly safely. will always provide a list with the result and with the error message if an error happens. So if you have the result, if no error happens, you get the result and the error message is null. And if something um, wrong, uh, if, if something wrong happens, then you, you don't get the result, but you get the error message. Okay. Now maybe uh, defines a new type of so you you get a maybe function that allows you to also decorate new functions. And what happens here is if you you know you, you use your your safe functions, you have a safe filter, safe mean, a safe poll. If everything went okay, you get the result. If something did not, if something uh, went wrong, you get zero in this case because here there is a call to this with default function. Now it's a lot of information, but basically what this happens is that it allows you to avoid situations where, for example, you can divide 10 by 2, you get 5, that's the normal division. If you define this new division using a maybe, well, you get just 5. And if you divide by zero instead of getting infinity, which is you know not really well defined, etc., here you get nothing. So just and nothing are new types that maybe also introduces. So what happens is that if you chain these maybe functions, etc., you get just the result, or you get nothing in some if something um, went wrong, right? So this is very useful because it allows you to build these safe functions. You can chain them together. And then you can do, I think we have an example maybe in the, um, I, I don't remember now, but there's probably, yeah, there, there's this example with, with all the uh, dplyr functions. You can save, you can just, you know, chain them. And if the result is okay, so for example here, if you filter over a value of eight, so seal equals equals eight over here, you get the result. Now there is no 100, there is no seal that equals 100, so you would get nothing. But instead of getting nothing, you can, with this with default, get zero, or if you put 10 here, you'd get 10. If you put, if, if you put 30, you'd get 30. And if you put nothing, you, if, if you put nothing, then you literally get nothing. So this allows you to, to build these uh, safe functions. Now, what I want to do in this video. So that's why it's going to be a long one. Uh, and this introduction already has been going for 10 minutes. So that's already very long. What I want to do is the following. I want to add to my to my library, to my functions, a possibility to have in the log 
some uh, some message, okay, or that that tells me, okay, something went wrong, okay, because here this loud select loud goodbye this pipeline here, if it fails, I just get I get I get an error, right? I, I get a null or whatever, I get an error. I don't want it to fail, okay? I want it to continue, but if I get an error somewhere, I want to get back null or nothing if I if I implement that which may be, but I think I will use safely. Um, and I want the error message to be to be here somewhere. So that's why I'm going to use safely, because safely, uh, unlike maybe, and maybe this is some this is coming in, in a future version, I don't know, but if I load per, right? If I load per, now it's taking an awful lot of time because my libraries are all in my hard disk and not on my SSD. Because the library, it, it, the, 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 the library grew, grew, grew so much and my SSD is really uh, small. Now, if I do something like safely sqrt, okay, I get a new function. And if I run safely sqrt of 10, I get a result. Right, I get my results. So this is a list now. The first element is the result. And here I get an error message. Now, if I do something like uh, SQRT of, of a, a string, then my result is null and I get the error message. So the error message gets captured. So I would like to put this error message in my log. Um, so this is what I'm going to try to do now live. Well, it's not really live because I'm not live streaming, but I haven't done that yet so it will be interesting now i will also show you uh, the internals of loudly so if i load my package and maybe here ideally i need to load it so this is my my development uh, environment so now if i do loudly of sqrt of 10 as in the example i get my result and i get a log and if I do this, I get nothing. Okay, so I just and this is not something that is nice uh, because the you know the idea of having a log is also to be able to to read when when something went wrong. So here, what would be great would be to actually return the log still with the error message that safely would provide. So. Let me first explain how uh, loudly or, or loud functions work and how I can chain them. For this, I'm actually going maybe to... Yeah, I think I will load the vignette because um, I think this will be... This will be... Or maybe the readme just to get... Uh, yeah just to get <coughs> some code. So, that's weird. It's the RMD. Ah, here it is. Okay, so, yeah. Let's go maybe with some example. Let's go with some dplyr. Uh, or maybe, yeah, let, maybe let's try it. Let's start with this. That's, that's good. So, if I run all of this, as you saw, if I run all of this, I get, let me open this window, come on, yeah. so I have a loud square root, loud exponential, loud mean, I start with a vector that goes from 1 to 10, I take the square root, I take the exponential, I take the mean, and I have my logs here. Now, why do I have this pint loudly here, what, 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 what's that, what, what's this pint loudly, okay, why can't I just write why can't I just write something like? Uh, why can't I just write something like this, right? Now, because this is the uh, oh crap, yeah. Because this is the uh, the native pipe, I actually need to write it like this, and over here like this. Now, why doesn't that work? Now, it's very simple. Remember that. Remember that this loud sqrt returns a list, right? And the issue is that loud exponential, which is the function that comes now, does not know how to handle a list, okay? 
exponential doesn't take a list as an argument. It takes either a vector of, well, for example, a vector of, of numbers or just one number. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't uh, doesn't know how to handle lists, and I'm giving it a list. Okay, I'm giving it a list if I do something like that, because as you see, I have a list of it. So bind loudly the function bind loudly. What this one does, it takes from the list, okay, from the what I call a loud value. From this loud value, it takes the result, feeds it to the original function, okay, and it also takes the log and adds it to the log argument. Now the log argument, of course, exponential doesn't have a log argument. The log argument comes uh, when you uh, use loudly on it. Okay, so if you do loud exponential, now this one has now a uh, a log, and by default is this log uh, log start. Okay, so bind loudly unwraps if you want the value. Okay, Un unwraps. Maybe let me get rid of this. Yeah. Now, bind loudly unwraps this, feeds the result to the function, and takes care of concatenating the logs. Now, this uh, is super important if you want to understand monads. So, wh what is a monad? Imagine that you wanted to you want to do that without using this approach, without using uh, this lo loud function that allows you to decorate functions and without bind loud. Now, what you would probably do is you would create some kind of wrapper around your functions and you would add, for each of them, you would add a log, okay? Or you would, you would write your functions and you would, uh, yeah, you would add a log to each of your functions. So what you want to do is to avoid, of course, to repeat yourself. This is like key in all that we do. We want to use functions to automate boring tasks. So this approach basically allows you to aut automate or, or simplify this boring task of adding logs. Now you can just call this function loudly. You can decorate your functions. Okay, and then using bind loudly, you can take care. So this bind loudly takes care of feeding the right arguments and to or putting the right pieces in the right places, right? So this is, uh, in essence, what, what a monad is. Uh, actually, the, the monad. To to have a monad, you have to have this this uh, these things. You have to have uh, a this this function, this bind loudly, or bind uh, in general. You have to have this bind. You have to have a way to to generate a a a monadic. They call it value. So, for example, if I, if I do something like loud value, I think it's loud value that I called it. No, I, I don't remember. Yeah, this just takes whatever I put there, puts it in the result, and as the log tells me, well, you create just created a loud value, so you so you need you need that, and of course you need uh, your function to to actually you know decorate if you want your um, your your functions. Put all of this together, and you get a monad. Well. I guess it's a bit more complicated than that because also disclaimer, I have absolutely no idea what the hell I'm doing. So I've been watching these category theory videos, reading about category theory, reading about the Haskell programming language where these concepts are are kind of uh, standard. Uh, I've been reading blog posts and I've tried to, to wrap my head around it. So maybe everything I'm telling you right now is complete crap, but it works. And that's that's what matters. It works. I'm actually surprised it works not too badly. Now, instead of using this bind loudly, uh, because it's you know a lot of uh, you have to type a lot of uh, blah bind loudly by where is it now bind loudly bind loudly bind loudly it's coming I guess maybe not. Instead of typing that, okay, you look at here bind loudly bind loudly. That's a lot of uh, typing. You can also use this bind operator, okay? That allows you to, uh, instead of using the standard pipe, this one will simply 
do the exact same thing as bind loudly. So it will take the result, will feed it to the function, and will concatenate the log swing. And this is probably where I need to to do some changes. So I, I, I won't do it. I, I don't think I will do both tonight. I think I will start just with this, or maybe just with bind loudly, because bind loudly should be much easier to, to handle, actually. Probably I will call it for, for now like bind loudly two or, or something like that. Or bind bind safely, maybe. Bind safely could perhaps be not a shabby name. Maybe bind safely will be much easier than this one. Because this one, this gave me trouble. This one really gave me trouble. And let's let's take a look at the source code. So now this is the non-standard evaluation uh, bit. So um, bind loudly. Bind loudly, fairly easy. You just you know grab your function, put the result where it needs to go, then you pass further arguments to the function if there are some, and you just add a log there, right? And then your um, your loudly. So this is the function that decorates the functions. So now my function over here, so this one returns a function, right? And here you have the, uh, the, the concatenation of the logs that happen, okay? However, that being said, what is really tricky if you want to do that as a pipe, you have to learn and know about non-standard evaluation and all kinds of things. Now, let's look at the source code of the pipe. You have a list, you have a function, and further arguments to the function. So for now, fairly standard stuff. Now, I call this, I uh, define this element called parsed, which is the, I call to parse function, I call to the parse one substitute dot f. So that's already a mouthful. So let's see what dparse. So let's start with dparse, not with dparse one. dparse substitute of a function just gives you a string of the function. Okay, so that's useful because then I can use this string to build a command, and then I I can evaluate this command. Okay, so if I want, and, and this works with with anything, right? If I want to add, uh, you know. Uh, Filter, Star Wars, uh, I don't remember now, human or no, species, species equal equal human. I don't, rem I don't know if this is correct, huh, but it doesn't matter. You get a string. So that's useful. However, <laughs> and this again gave me trouble. I think I did it yesterday. I think I corrected the bug. Dparse, for some reason, probably, <laughs> whenever something stupid, is defined in R. This is probably for compatibility with S. So this is kind of a meme, but it's true. Dparse, for some stupid reason, if you give it a command that is too long, dparse will cut it at, I think it's by default, 50 characters, and it will return a vector with the first 50 characters and then the rest. Why? I don't know. Uh, so if you do something like dparse, substitute, and then blah 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 blah. No, okay. I guess this one was still too short. So let's add a bit more. The hell. Okay, now, now I'm getting angry. What the hell? Why is it working now? Is is this still too short? What the hell? For some reason, for some reason, so now I have to show you because I'm getting angry. For some reason, this tests over here. Let me show you. So I wrote some tests to, to see if my functions were working well. This one's. Ah, come on. I love Space Max, but sometimes the basic stuff. Ah. Anyway, this one. Okay, was not working because it was too long and it was getting cut at 50 characters. So here, for some reason, it's not happening. So I don't know why. 
but if you look at the parse, you see that there's the width cutoff of 60. So I'm not crazy. There's a width cutoff of 60 characters. But now, for some reason, it's not doing it. However, dparse1, dparse1, it's 500. Okay? So I changed it from dparse to dparse1. Whatever. Anyway, so then I give that to parse function. So let's take a look at parse function. So parse function is like, I, I don't know how this works. <laughs> Honestly, I, it's trial and error and Googling and trying to wrap my hand around the regex, re, regex, regex, I'd say regex, regular expressions. And basically what, what parse function does, maybe let me show you. Uh, yeah, no, I need to show you with, yeah, with something like that. What this one does, it returns a list with the function and with the arguments to that function, plus a comma space, which is very important. I spent a long time coming up with the right regular expressions that work in I hope all cases now, at least all cases that I tested. You see, there's still some comments here that I actually could could erase. And using this, okay, so now if we go back, I feed that to a, um, a function called make command. So make command, and this is a trick that a very nice person uh, showed me in the um, RStudio forums. I think I will link the um, the, the the thread in the comments, uh, the comments in the description. This simply takes the so so it's a string. It, it it returns a string of the function that I want to evaluate. So it will be dot l result. So this is my layered value. So this is the result that I feed using the standard R four point one pipe to my function because remember. This is the, the function. I need to open a parenthesis. Then I give it the arguments. Okay. And then, don't forget, I have a uh, column space there. Now I can give it the log. And this creates the command, exactly how you would type it. And then I just need some evil parse magic. And evil parse, basically, uh, you can test it in a terminal. Evil parse text and let's go with uh, for example head uh, add uh, iris it will evaluate your string so you can build commands like like this and then using eval parse you can evaluate it that took me quite some time um, and changing it now will probably not work uh, will probably not work I will probably need to I, I think I will I would need to change make commands uh, I'll probably do it offline, but for for us tonight, let's already get pint loudly. And this should be easy. Should be easy. Let's call it pint safely. Let's just copy and paste. So this, uh, if if you if you've never developed a, a package, now you're going to learn a little bit about package development. Package development in R is fairly easy, uh, to be honest, um, because you can write the code as you would write it. Uh, for yourself. Um, if you want, you don't need to, but it's better. You can add some documentation, which is some simple R markdown uh, strings. There's some para there's some yeah, extra keywords here that help allow you to define what is the parameter of your function, what does your function return, some examples, and, and basically once you document your package using a uh, the uh, DevTools package. So with DevTools, there's a function called document. If you call that function, um, DevTools will compile the documentation for you. And uh, and it's great. It's really easy and, uh, and it works really well. So let's, let's just copy and paste this. So now evaluate a decorated, I will say a decorated safe function uh, made using per safely. 
And maybe, as I said, I will also extend this uh, to use uh, maybes. So the, the, the other package I showed you, um, I, might, I might also do that in the future. So this is allowed value, a list of two elements. Um, mm -mm -mm, but, yeah, but, but what? But where the result? Because the thing is, what I want to have, this is going to be tricky. I think this is going to be tricky. This is this one is going to be tricky because okay, let's let's first try, let's first try over here. If I do something like safely, loudly, ask URT, right? What does that do? Actually, all right, it seems to be working. So. The first, so this, this is a list, right, where the result is a list, that's from the, that's the loud value, which contains the uh, result and the log, and then the second element of the first list is the error, so that's from safely. Now, do I want it this way, or do I want to do something like loudly, safely, ask URT? Do I want to do something like this, maybe? Because now, I my result is the output of safely, so it's the result plus the error. And my log, because, okay, let's suppose, let's suppose I, I do something wrong. Yeah. What happens? What do I get out? Okay, that's good. I think this is good. I think this is what I want. I think this is what I want. Let me get my chair. I think this is what I want, because this gives me uh, the result plus the error message, and I still get the log. That's good. If I do it the other way around, if I start, this will just, I think this will just give me null or something. Ah, no, it actually also gave me, hmm. But this matters. This is important because I need to see how I change. What do I have here? I have something in my beard. No? Anyway. This matters, the order matters because bind loudly, okay? The way bind loudly works is it, it expects a loud value that it passes to a function that uh, is loud. So my start starting object should be a loud value. So it should it should be this way, it should be it should be something like this, because this is a what I call a loud value. Okay, this is a loud value. So it should be loudly, safely, and then, and then, okay, what I need to do. So let's let's call it bind safely. Then the, my 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 result, okay, contains the result um, so I need to call it need to call it result I think let's say let's save this one maybe let's yeah, let's see. so now you see you see how I develop stuff it's not very not very clean result gives me yeah so if I do result result that gives me so I need to do result result. So maybe let me add a, this is where, uh, this is maybe one of the examples as well, where comments, comments actually uh, are useful. So maybe tell results, that's the result of the loud value, tell results, results, that's the result of safely and 
fail result error. That's the error message from safely. And this one, L result log. That's the log, right? Uh, result log. Nope. Oh no, it's just dollar. Re yeah, just simply as simple as that. Okay, so that will help me get my hands around it. Now, I need to evaluate that. Fair enough. But, 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 and this is crucial. This is crucial. If dot L result result is null, right? So is dot null, is it? Yeah, it's not null. L result result. Then, 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 how do you write a if else statement? I don't remember. I don't remember. Let's, I, I, do, I always use if else in a vectorized. If else, if this is null, then, 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 I want to get, yep, I want to get the error message. So the error message is dot l result error else empty empty character so that's like uh, the zero it's like the zero for strings uh, and let's call it um, whatever let's call it log from safely something like that okay so then I want to evaluate. I want to evaluate this. But what happens? Let me see again. What happens if I get if I do something crazy like this? So my result is null. But I still get a log. But what happens now? Okay. What happens now if I? Okay. No. Let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I think this this is okay. Uh, because if it is null, I will get. Uh, so my my function will return an error again. So I think this could work. So the log now needs to be something like maybe let's do for now a paste zero so this will be i will need then to, to make this a bit more elegant but let's already get it to work just something like uh, log safely let's just put that together uh, maybe maybe let me add let me add this now if i get an error message this will return something if I get yeah well, I don't like it but I, yeah let's let's just yeah we're fine That's it. it's fine let's just uh, let's just save let's just reload it and let's see if I find safely if I have it great I have it now great so now let's let's write some um, let's let's just write some examples. Uh, some simple stuff for now, yeah, like over here. And let's, um, yeah, let's write down here. Who cares? It's just to test things out. Then, if if it works, I will do something a bit better. Let's write. I will call. So I need to. I need to do in what order? Safe, safely, loudly, right? That's how it works. Loudly, safely. Yeah, loudly. So I, let's call them LS. And uh, yeah, I need to add. Uh, I'm confused now. It's loudly safe. Okay.
Great. ls sqrt f10. Nice. So I do get a very complex object, so like a list of lists. So that's not great, but with the advantage that uh, if I get now an error message, hopefully this will keep concatenating the log and hopefully we'll have something very interesting and, and very, yeah, very interesting and very useful as well. Let's see. Uh, yeah, not loud, but ls. Uh, no, Great. Oh, did it work? Okay, so I get these weird dots here. That's because of in bind safely I, I did this paste stuff. So this is an example that works. So I still get my log. I get this weird stuff. I mean, I will need to, to take care of it, but that's already looking good. Now let's see what happens if instead of, uh, if now I get an error message. Oh, it worked. It worked. What the freak? So I get, I get nothing. Okay. Uh, and I get a log, so let's 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 see. Non numeric, yeah. So that's yeah the very first yeah the log sqrt. That's the log of the log sqrt. Um, then non numeric argument to mathematical function, and then again on so this con okay keeps concatenating the error message, which is perhaps not so bad. Uh, so this is a square t, but wait, shouldn't that be? Why why do I get this one already? That's the log start. Okay, so I mean it's not one hundred percent yet. Then non-numeric argument to math mathematical function. Again, great, and then again safely mean. Hey, that's weird. Safely mean doesn't have. Oh, is it because say is, is it because mean doesn't error when it gets a, a string? Really, it just shows a warning message. But aren't warning messages captured by safely? Let's see. Maybe not. Uh, no, they're not. Now oh, that sucks. Uh, maybe there's an argument to safely to also capture. Quite true. Maybe quiet. Maybe that's quiet. Quite false. Mm, that no. <laughs> what the freak? Why does mean? Why doesn't it error? Why does mean just show a warning? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that's something else. I'm quite happy, <laughs> to be honest. Um, this idea seems to be working. There's some rough edges, because of course I need to I need to make these error messages look, look good. But now, the huge advantage is now that I have something that uh, will, yeah, that will, that will work, that will work pretty well. Maybe let, let me try to do something a uh, something else. I don't know if this is going to work like this. I want to start with some. Um, yeah, let me let me try. I want to start with some uh, error with some negative. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can. And let's go with mean first. Maybe let me just. Yeah, let's go with mean. Then no, let's go x sqrt and so mean you're right mean mean would work then you'd get a some some negative number as the mean right then you pass that to sqrt there you will get an error message and then 
the exponential would also error. Okay, now I have a problem with my Emacs, but let's see. Start, no problem. Safe mean, no problem. Safely. <sighs> ah, I fucking hate this. Don't you error. No, it does not. It does not error. It just sends you a warning. What the freak? Yeah. Uh... This is stupid. So I need a way to handle error. I need to capture warnings as well because that's that's uh, that. There's probably a function that does that. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. I need to see. In any case, if it does error like uh, like I had before with a string. If I do something, opla, that's not what I wanted. Okay. okay. Yeah, my Emacs is not playing uh, along nicely. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, you see? Yeah, what the freak? Sometimes I get, I get these weird... Okay, it's not working anymore. Yeah, my, my Emacs is not playing nicely. I don't know why. And now, and now I get this error message instead of getting my, oh, that's because my functions here. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I just, I um, undid too many steps. That's why. I was worried there for a minute. Yeah, beautiful. Now, oh, well, this is even another error message. That's because I, I did not select. Yeah, now it's great. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, so now the next step would be to format this, uh, these strings here better. Would be to also uh, capture the warnings because that's quite uh, important. And then I will need to uh, create a pipe operator. So this pine safely, I will I will have to find some weird symbol for this pipe operator. That that works. But I think this is quite useful. I really think that this can be useful to a lot of people because if you wanna if you have pipes running in production, so this is not maybe you know for, for exploratory work it's not great. But if you have pipes running in production and these pipes could fail for some reason. I think that having this log will really be helpful because you will see where there was a problem and you will also see uh, the error message. Um, so I think this is really, I think this is really, really useful. For example, here you could see, well, non-numeric arguments to mathematical function. Oh crap, it's my safe exponential that uh, failed. And where, when did it fail? Oh, it failed just three minutes after I left my office. Gosh darn it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. So this was a really long video, almost 50 minutes, um, and it was really unstructured. It was really just me trying to build in a new feature. It kind of worked, so I'm kind of happy. I did not write a unit test because I am tired. It's almost 11 p.m. and I have kids and they don't let me sleep. So I need to go to sleep now because I will be dead tomorrow otherwise. Um, so I did not write a unit test. Maybe uh, I could make another video where I write the tests for this and uh, I will show you my progress because I will probably continue working on that until our next video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed yet and if you have watched, if you, if you watched all this video up until now and you're not subscribed, like oh, just subscribe maybe, like what are you waiting for? And, um, and yeah, see you next time and stay safe. And uh, yeah, stay safe.